It's been a little while since we've done any kind of hardware project here in the shop, so today I thought we would make a little cabinet latch. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. This is a simple latch for a cabinet door. It's not going to be a locking latch. There's no key, anything like that. It just keeps the door closed so it doesn't accidentally swing open, or it keeps the cat from crawling into your kitchen cabinets. And to make this latch, I'm going to use these two pieces of material. This is a piece of eighth by one and a half. So that's roughly three millimeter by 40 millimeter. And this is a piece of quarter by half. So that's about six millimeters by 13 millimeters. You start giving metric dimensions long enough, you start to remember what they should be. And I think this bar, we're going to just work off the long bar so I don't need tongs, at least initially to start the project. The flat bar is go then going to be a back plate for the, the latch bar to mount to and a second back plate for the keeper to mount to. The long bar will simply be the latch bar. That's really all that's go going to be is a single piece bar that lifts up and drops down into the keeper. And there will be a rivet to hold some of this stuff together. So for this I'm going to cut a square and then probably just a skinnier piece for the keeper. And we'll lightly texture these in the forge and drill holes in it. We're going to start by drawing out a little rat tail and that'll be the part that you can grab with your fingers to lift and maybe taper it down and spread the end so that we've got a nice little brown detail where the rivet goes through into the back plate. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm just going to start by lightly beveling the back plates. You can certainly do a filed bevel or Leave them as they are, but I think they look out of place if they don't have some forge texture on them. And those may need a little filing or grinding to clean up the edges. A lot of times it pulls a little point out right there at the corner. Easy to fix with a file. Now I'm going to start by making the pivot point. It's just going to get a little taper in the, the bar. And that gives me a bit of a shoulder I can start to round up here. creating a little bit larger pad there with some half face blows. I think that's going to look much better. This may require a little bit of filing too to get it perfectly round. But you can get really close at the anvil. Just need to practice. So that's pretty much all we want there. The next thing I want to do is I want to draw this out into a little rat tail so you got something to grab with your fingers. I'm just going to start this with half face blows at the far side of the anvil. You may need to think about which way this faces depending on if it's going to be a left-handed latch or a right-handed latch. I don't have a use in mind right now so I'm just picking one. We'll cut this off after the next heat, probably. That leaves a nice transition there. I'll keep drawing that out a little bit and then cut it.
I think there's still enough heat there to cut this off. No need to cut all the way through and shoot it across the shop. Keep a close eye on the color there. If you hammer quickly, that's actually heating up right now. Don't get carried away doing that though, because you might end up with results you don't like. That's square. We're going to go to octagon. Then we can round it up. If this is all lumpy and bumpy at this stage, you could file it while it's flat and get it nice and smooth. But there's no reason you shouldn't be able to get it smooth right from the hammer. And working real lightly down into a black heat like this really does help smooth it out. You're not drawing it out anymore at this point, just getting rid of the very slight surface imperfections. So our next step is to roll that up, and I'm going to roll it out so there's something to grab. And it's got to roll out towards the side that has our step, or our shoulder, for that pivot point. an eye on it so you don't put any kinks in it. It's going to be real hard to get into that tight little scroll later. I'm pretty happy with that. If you need to adjust a little bit, you might be able to get some round nose pliers in there. So that is our little latch bar. We're going to do a little filing on it cold. Now we need to make a keeper for that. And for the keeper I'm going to use the same piece of quarter by half inch bar. And I'm going to create a shoulder on this. I'm going to let that thicken up a little bit. So I've got a nice shoulder when I put this in the fin finished piece. This is where the, the latch bar will drop down into. And I think I'm just going to file in a tenon on here to set as a rivet just to make sure it goes real smooth. It's an awfully small tenon and I don't have any tiny little tenoning tools. I suppose we could make some, but probably not in the middle of the video. Then I want to bevel off the front of that before I cut it, just because it's easier now. Again, we'll probably use some files on that.
That then becomes our little catch. So that's all of the pieces we need to make our latch forged out. Going to be a little bit of filing and fitting. We're going to make a tenon on this piece so that it can rivet into the back plate. And we should have a nice functioning little cabinet latch. So now we've come to the time we need to assemble all of our component parts, do a little filing, clean everything up. And what I kind of envision here is that these will probably sit about that far apart in use. We'll drill a whole center here, four screw holes, and then this can pivot up and down. So it'll get a very loose rivet in there. And this piece then goes down here. So I'm going to assemble this first and then figure out exactly where this has to go before I drill a hole there. And of course, we're going to get all the filing done and get everything cleaned up so it's nice and pretty and fits right. I think the first thing I'll do is go ahead and Mark center of this for the pivot hole. I'll drill a hole there and then I'll just eyeball the four corners and probably just two screw holes here. I'm going to start just by edge filing these back plates to make sure they're even. Doesn't take much time at all. And with a filing vise, we can just put a slight filed bevel in there, just gives a little bit more refined look. Now let's go ahead and do this thing. I think I'll start by cleaning up that end. make that a crisper edge here. This file has one safe edge and one toothed edge. So I want the toothed edge in here to push that over a little bit. And that provides a nice place for this to, to catch. do that I'm going to put this in there and I'm going to tip my blade just a little bit so I'm pushing back this way just to get an index mark here so I want to have plenty of room and just a little bit of a cut so I can find it use the saw blade to index that in the vise Just creating that shoulder. And then with the save edge of the file down against the vise, Remember, this is for a kitchen cabinet, so it doesn't need to be high strength. If you're doing this for a big door, I'd make everything much bigger. Because you could use this piece to test it because it'll get the same size hole as that. And that'll fit just fine. So now we need to do this. 
and it doesn't need much. That's pretty much that. I'm going to go drill a hole in there and then we'll start trying to fit it all up. Actually, let's put a couple of little file marks in here just to ornament it some. So for that I'm going to just put a piece of angle iron in the vise. We've seen all this stuff done previously. And I can use vise grips to clamp that down. Just a triangular file to create some little lines. Also notice this is a little off. We should be able to fix that cold. That looks better. So I'm going to go ahead and just go drill that hole. I'll be right back. And I drilled that one drill bit size oversize, so 64th over, and that way it'll pivot a little bit better. I also put my touch mark in here for those that want to make sure I always put the touch mark in. So that should just pivot there. When we rivet this, it's going to lock in tight and we're going to have to heat it up and work it. But we will be able to work it loose just like working a pair of tongs loose. I am just going to set the rivet cold though. I think that'll be quicker and easier. That's flush down there in the back. But like I say, it's completely locked up tight. I'm just going to put that in the vise. It's not just super hot. We'll see if it's hot enough to work or not. Seems like it. Just work that back and forth. And to keep working it as it cools, it should kind of self-adjust to this. I'm trying to work it all the way around to make sure it's really free. And the other thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of paste wax on here as it cools. It's still a little bit too hot, smoking too much. You want it to smoke a little but not just burn off because then you're just wasting wax. That'll get down in that joint, lubricate it, and gives it a nice finish. You may still need to work a little as it cools. So now we want to turn our attention to this keeper and hope that I've left enough room for it. It's going to be right on the edge of that screw hole. That's too bad. So a little bit bigger back plate or even thinning this drop bar down a little bit might have helped some, but I think we're going to have just enough room to get a screw in that screw hole. And then that just goes in there. A nice snug fit, just barely leaves room to get a screw into that countersink. So we are just right on the money. I'll put that in the vise. This is a little tougher because you're not supported as well in the vise and it's going to slip. So just be aware of that. Make sure you keep an eye on everything, keep it going square. As it gets down there, you may need to readjust or you may need to heat it with a torch, even though it's the same size rivet. See, that's starting to slip a little bit, so I need to really make sure it's down good and tight.
It's going in pretty well. I'm going to have some gouging to clean up on the side of this from the vise. Doesn't really hurt anything if you file it out of there. Frequently I'll just plug weld these from the back and I think that works pretty well. But you don't have to have a welder to do this stuff. The old guys didn't do them with welders. They did them just like this. So now it's just a matter of a little bit of filing to clean up those little shoulders that went in there. If you're worried about this slipping, you could certainly put a square tenon on there or just create a little key with a square punch that would index that, but I'm not that worried about it. This kind of puts a taper in this piece that I kind of like, so this is actually going to be nice done this way. Make sure there's no sharp edges. And that then should drop in there, and you can adjust this spacing a little bit when you install it. Now this it kicks up a little bit, so it's not perfectly ideal. So this could be smaller, or if I'd used a little bit wider material for my back plates, I could have slid this down some. So there's a lesson learned there. So an inch and three quarter, even two inch tall back plates, I think would look good. I think the width is good. So maybe I'd leave it that width and just make it a taller plate. Or you can file this down. You could file a little bit more in there, which wouldn't be too hard to do just whether or not it's going to be enough. I went ahead and brought this piece up to heat and wire brushed it. So now we'll wax it as well. I use Johnson's Paste Wax. There are other products out there they are just waxes meant for wood finishes, wood floors, things like that. So now I need to let that cool just a little bit before I can touch it. But you do get to see that that's the way that will look in use. So there's the finished latch. And you can move this whatever distance you want to get everything centered up on your cabinet doors. Like I say it would have been nicer if this came down perfectly level across here and that's something we could make another one and we could adjust that. I think making a bigger back plate is the best way to do that. You could cut a little notch in here or make this skinnier but I don't think I would like the way that looks. I think I'd rather have it running up at this slight little up angle than I would to have a notch cut in this. But it's a, a good learning piece and I'm sure you get the idea of how this would go together and just make some adjustments. Like I say, maybe two inch tall material here would be the way to go. That would solve all of those problems. Little hardware items like this are really kind of fun to make. You get to do some moving parts. You get to see how all these parts relate to each other and do some assembly work. Lots of different little techniques from drawing material out. You use some half face blows. There's some square octagon round. There's filing. There's riveting. There's even a little bit of scroll work in that in detail. And the material investment probably isn't 50 cents or dollars worth of materials. It's all out of the scrap pile. I didn't go cut any brand new material for this. So it's really an economical way to go. Oh, I guess the rivet was new because I just buy my rivets pre-made. But that now pivots nicely and it'll actually stay up. It's tight enough, although over time it will wear out. And I suppose you could make something like this with a little catch pin so it can't flop down. But I think that's just not necessary in this size. If you want to do that, go to something a little bit bigger and start looking at something that maybe has a spring on it that pushes it back down. And the spring then would make sure this locks back down in place when you close the door and it would right up on that and drop right in place. Much more elegant latch, a lot fancier. And maybe one of these days we'll look into one with a spring. I've never actually done one like that. I think it'd be a fun project to try. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. 
Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. If you would like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.